Lord, help me to please you. The request is to be acceptable in God's sight. Verse 14. Acceptable literally means, comes from a Hebrew word that means uh, to delight, means to bring pleasure. God bless my wife. It, simply put, it is to be pleasing. To be pleasing. Notice verse 14 is not a prayer for material things. It's not a prayer for the death of his enemies. It's not even a prayer for healing. It's not a prayer for God to feel some hole that was present in his life. Instead, it was a prayer to simply be pleasing in God's sight. This prayer is counterintuitive to what we know, to what we know by natural intuition. Intuition, of course, is that which we naturally know without having to be taught. This request stands and it is counterintuitive to that. And it stands in stark contrast to much of what we are taught. Amen. In church today. Most of what we're taught today, the hit sermons, the sermons that sell, the sermons that we love, and the teachings that we admire are those who teach us how to move God in some way so that God will do something that pleases us. But David here is praying, Lord, help me to be pleasing to you. I want to please you, Lord. Amen. Question is, how often do we stop and ask God if he's pleased with what we're doing? If, we're, if he's pleased with our conversation? If he's pleased with our attendance? If he's pleased with our prayer life? Sister Morgan, thank you for that wonderful birthday gift that you gave me. Second to none. Amen. If he is pleased with the way we worship him. I wonder if pleasing God crosses our mind as it should at all. 1 John 3 and 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Think of the request we make, Sister Sharon Dooley, to the Lord, even when we know that we're not doing things that are pleasing in his sight. It's too cool. Um... Many times we can be harboring things that we know God don't like and still ask God to do what we want him to do for us even though we know that we're not pleasing in his sight. John said here we can ask what we want and we'll get whatever we want from him because we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. How about before you make the next big request of God? Concentrate on doing those things that are pleasing in his sight. You talking about something that puts weight on your prayer request? That moves your voice 
to a place of familiarity like none other. You're talking about something that takes your application from the bottom in heaven and puts it on the top of the stack. Nobody moves God like people who do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? That principle holds true in human relationships. It holds true in, 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 in career building. It holds true in, in, in uh, holding your marriage together. Uh, it is something to be said for doing those things that are pleasing in his sight. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 21 says, speaking of the Lord, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. A great prayer would be to pray that the Lord Work in me through Jesus Christ those things that are pleasing. Are you hearing me? In his sight. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I want you to add to your thought processes, to your goals, uh, to the way your mind and your heart work. Add to it a category and, and, and put this category to the front of the line. And let it be the category where he says, Lord, am I pleasing you? Now, we hear often about what God will do to please us. But we don't hear enough uh, about our efforts to please him. So much so that I can't get an amen from him. While I'm talking to you about doing those things that are pleasing in his sight. We want God to heal us from cancer. We want God to make us millionaires and billionaires. We want the Lord to put all of our children through co college. We want God to fix every malady. We want all of these things without play, putting forth just about any effort to do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Amen. Amen. Am I pleasing you in my relationships? Am I pleasing you, Lord, uh, with my worship? I believe that one of the reasons the Lord met us during the convocation was we prayed before the meeting. About 200 people came out and met me here in prayer. And among the things that we prayed over, we prayed to be pleasing in God's sight. We ask the Lord not to let anything be done through strife nor vain glory. And if there is something that, 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 that is taking place or something that happens that's not pleasing in his sight, then Lord, show us and we will do those things. Say amen. I challenge you. Today, to make pleasing God a priority. People who make pleasing God a priority, God makes pleasing them a priority. In our text, Psalms 19, I've said on more than one occasion that this psalm is two psalms in one. But actually, the psalm has four major uh, compartments. Amen. Four. Uh, not, not too hard. So y all, y all work with them. Amen. We're trying to adjust 
the temperature. I saw saints wrapping up one time because they were cold. Now I see saints fanning because they're getting hot. So we, we're going to get it right after a while. Amen. And, uh, and if we don't get it right, just let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart be acceptable. But um, verse, uh, it, it's, it's four parts. Uh, verse one through six deals with the natural revelation. How God speaks to us through nature and his created universe. Verse seven through nine speaks of the written revelation. How God reveals himself through us, through, uh, to us through his word. Verse 10 through 11, uh, which is the third part, teaches of the value of God's written word. And how we should desire God's written word. In fact, we, God's written word is more valuable and it is to be desired more than silver and gold. And it is better than the honey and the honeycomb. According to the scriptures. And lastly, there is this fourth part which I want to preach to you about today and that is man's response and man's request to God's natural revelation and God's word. Because of the darkness of sin and the deceit of the devil, the word of God is neither our natural instruction nor our natural delight. By nature, we do not turn to God's word. And by nature, we do not delight in God's word because by nature, because of sin, we are in a fallen condition. And since we're in this fallen state and because of the darkness of sin, thus the word must come in the power of God's spirit to bring conviction of sin and cleansing from sin. After meditating on God's natural and special revelation, God speaking through the nature and God speaking through his word, the constant broadcast of his will to our broken receivers, the psalmist turns to fallen humanity. The Bible teaches that day unto day utter his speech. <clears throat> night unto night showeth knowledge. That there is no language, no speech, there's no people where God's voice is not heard. God is constantly broadcasting his existence, his holiness, his way. But he's constantly broadcasting to the broken receivers of fallen humanity. So then David asks, who can understand his errors? The question is, apart from God, God's revelation and the Lord speaking to us, the answer is no one but God himself. The truth is, upper room, as you can see, humanity needs a whole lot of help from God to get right with God. In addition to nature, in addition to his written word, the psalmist prays and says, uh, God help us. Amen. He asks the question, who can understand his errors? Who can properly detect his errors or his failings? Which one of us actually see how incorrect we can be. Who of us are, are, are aware of our wicked ways as we ought to be? In most cases, we cannot detect our errors 
because our errors are hidden from our own view. The prophet Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things. I preached to you about this not long ago. And desperately wicked. The human heart, my heart and yours is the most deceitful aspect of our being. We're told all the time to trust our hearts. That's the main thing that you ought not to trust. Trust the Bible, but don't trust your heart. Hallelujah. Trust God's words, but don't trust your feelings. For the heart is deceitful. Amen. It's deceitful. I like what Matthew Henry said about the human heart. He said this, and I quote, the heart, the conscience of man, in his corrupt and fallen state, is deceitful above all things. It calls evil good and good evil. It puts false colors upon things. The human heart has a way of, of coloring wrong behavior as right. Insincerity as sincerity. The human heart can call Evil, good, and good, evil. I can't get a witness. Oh, yes. Henry said, the case is bad indeed. If the conscience, which should rectify the errors of the other faculties, is itself a mother of falsehood, and the ring leader in the delusion. If the heart which is supposed to regulate the rest of us is the source of the lies that's been fed to us and the ringleader in deceiving us, which Jeremiah says it is, then we are in bad shape. This is why the only person who could answer uh, God's question uh, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Uh, who can know it? Only God could answer that question. He said in Jeremiah 17 and 10, I try the heart. I know the heart. I try the reins. God knows my heart. Amen. We can't trust our hearts in moments of temptation. Have you ever believed in all of your heart that you would pass a certain test? only to get in the midst of that test and fail the test? Have you ever found yourself to not be as strong as you thought you were? Have you ever found yourself in a position where you said, oh, I believe God and I will never do such a thing, only to find yourself doing that thing when you were in at that situation? Oh, you weren't lying. You were sincere. You, you really believed that you were as strong as you were because your heart was lying to you. It was the ring leader in the delusion. My God, many people have messed up their lives because their heart have sent them on pipe dreams. Their heart have them chasing their own tail. Your heart will keep you running in circles. I told you last Sunday that it takes more than sincerity because people have been sincere, but they were sincerely wrong. Northern, you got to be right. Got to, got to, got to give your heart to the Lord because the truth is, we can't understand our errors. This is why the prayer of verse 12 is so important. He, he prays in verse 12 after he asks the question, who can understand his errors? He says, cleanse thou me from secret faults. God Almighty, cleanse me, Lord, from hidden faults, faults that I have that I am not aware of. And listen, let me give you a word of, uh, of revelation. We all have.
have them. If you're sitting there wondering, do I have secret false Lord? Yes. This is God from heaven answering through me. We all have them. Praise the Lord. One, one man, Robert Burns, the poet, he put it this way. He said, to see ourselves as others see us. Not to mention how God sees us. And, and I've, I think I've said this before, that many times the, the errors that we have that we don't see, others see them quite clearly. It's the, and this is, this is not, a, this is not a, a, a throw off on anybody. This is true of all of us. See, it's, it's the, it is the fallen human condition. And this should humble you, all of us, and, and cause us all to pray more this prayer because we all have them. Amen. We all have them, no matter how righteous you are. Praise the Lord. No matter how liberal you may be, no matter how conservative you are, no matter how long you've been saved, we all have them. So the prayer is assume that you do. Assume that they exist because they do. So therefore pray and say, God, cleanse thou me. Hallelujah. And some of y'all not saying amen, but you know, uh, you know I'm telling the truth. Cleanse thou me from, praise the Lord, secret faults. Cleanse me from my hidden failings, uh, my propensities that I have that I'm not even aware of, but they exist. Cleanse me. How many know that God will clean you up? Praise the Lord. He will, uh, he will, he will wash you clean. Some of us, um, are, we, we, we're wonderful, we're wonderful, we're wonderful. You don't believe me, just ask us. We're wonderful. But even the most wonderful in here need to ask God to clean you up. Amen. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. A good question to, a good place to start with all of us when things aren't going right. A good place to start is, even though they, they're teaching you now in this pop psychology, which I hate. Uh, you know, the, uh, one of the things that make everybody love this lady, I think it's Ayana, I Ayana, whoever, what's her name? Yeah, her. They got a show, uh, Fix My Life, and one of the first things she tells people is, you know, what you're going through is not because you've done anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with you, and blah, blah, blah. She starts with a false premise. You should actually start with the premise, what's wrong with me? You, you should st we should always start with ourselves first. Praise the Lord. Praise. It ain't God. And you're being done a disservice if, if anybody convinced you that it's everybody else and not you. That's never the case. That's never the case in life. Praise the Lord. So the, a good place to start is, Lord, cleanse thou me. After David considered the natural revelation and then the written revelation. And then the value of God's word. He said, God, who can know his errors? Cleanse thou me from my secret faults. I'll preach in just a moment. And keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Now, if you were quiet when I was talking about presumptuous sins, we're going to hear, when I was talking about secret faults, we're going to hear a pin drop when I preach on presumptuous sins. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. First thing I wish to point out here is that David recognized that he was in a covenant relationship with God. For he said, keep back thy servant. He called himself the Lord's servant. How many will, will rightly, if you're, if you're born again, you see yourself as the Lord's servant. The word servant means slave. I am the Lord's bond Man, God's bondsman, God's slave. See, we're in a, a, a master-slave relationship with the Lord. And well, well, I'm not going to be anybody's slave, all right? Well, he's not going to cleanse you. See, part, part of the problem is there's too much of us alive in us. I wrote a song one time and said, the, the lyrics of the song is, I'm a fanatic about him. Uh, the point of the song is, I'm a fool for Jesus. Somebody said, well, I ain't going to be nobody's fool. The biggest fool will say something like that. Because the greatest thing you can be in life is the Lord's fool. When you become the Lord's fool, you, you, you're smarter than the devil. 
you become the Lord's fool. Don't you know that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of God is the beginning of understanding. It starts with becoming the Lord's slave or fool for Christ. And the more foolish we become for Christ, the more the Lord opens himself up to us and we get the wisdom of God. And the Bible tells us something about the Lord. The Bible says, as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts. He's so much superior uh, than we are uh, to, to us. He's superior to us. And, and to become the Lord's fool is to become humanity's wisest. For the wisest in him humanity. The freest people in the world are people who are in a master-slave relationship with the Lord. Matter of fact, you don't become free until you become the Lord's slave. The Bible says, uh, you shall know as you follow on to know the Lord. And he says, uh, it will make you my disciples. And those of you, the truth will make you free. And it will make you my disciple indeed. That is a true disciple. Freedom comes from becoming the Lord's slave. The more we humble ourselves to the Lord, the more we submit ourselves to the Lord, the better our life becomes. The further we move from thoughts of suicide, the, the easier, the, the, the further we move away from depression, the further we move away from being down and out and bound by the devil, praise the Lord, the, the more we humble ourselves, uh, as we humble ourselves to God, uh, humility to God is the, is the key to freedom. In the kingdom, the way up is down. The more, we, the more time we spend on our knees, the more joy we're going to have. The more time we spend on our face before the Lord, the more the Lord will lift us up. Amen. David says, I'm, I'm the servant. And he said, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin. Keep back. That is, hold me. Restrain me. God Almighty. How many know that you need to have the Lord to hold you? Because things, there are wicked thoughts and wicked desires and wicked surmisings that live and reside in our flesh. Things come to mind. Thoughts come to mind. Cravings come to mind from our flesh. And some of these things are stronger than we are. So we ought to pray, Lord, hold God, I'm, I'm, I'm liable to do this, so I need you to keep me back from it. Keep me back, because on the inside, I'm reaching for it, Lord, but God is able. Somebody cry, keep me, Lord. My God, keep me from myself. Keep me from that part of me that's trying to convince me that it's all right to disobey you. Keep me. Oh, I'm struggling today because y'all won't say amen. But I'm telling you the truth. He said, he said, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Presumptuous sins. And notice, notice the progression. He moves from inadvertent sins, secret faults, propensities, shortcomings that I don't even know I have. They're there. Cleanse me from them. But I can't stop right there because the truth is uh, sin doesn't only abide in my flesh on a subconscious level. Sin abide in my flesh on a conscious level. See, every sin that you deal with is not subconscious. You wasn't even aware. I, I didn't even know I was wrong. No, there are things 
that we deal with that the Bible says is wrong, that we know is wrong, that the scriptures say is wrong, and yet we dare to do it anyhow. That's the presumptuous sin. You know what the Bible says about it. See, see, the, the, the pre pre presumptuous sins are sins that were never covered in the sacrificial sy system of the law. See, the law, uh, uh, the penalty uh, for presumptuous sins was death. See, in the law, there are some sins you can just go and offer something and God will forgive you. But presumptuous sins, murder, presumptuous sins, witchcraft, presumptuous sin, adultery, presumptuous sin, homosexuality, presumptuous sin, be bestiality, presumptuous sin, abortion. There was nothing that you could offer on the altar that would remove uh, the, 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 the stain and get forgiveness for presumptuous sin. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for the superior way of Christ. See, Christ, Christ was superior to the law. Amen. How many are glad that he is? I'm glad. I'm glad. Aren't you glad? But, but see, that, but see, this is what he's thinking about. Now, Christ hadn't come yet. And he said, Lord, I want you to keep me from presumptuous sins, errors that I am aware of. Wrongs that I know are wrong before I do them. The presumptuous sin, the presumptuous sinner is a sinner who boldly disobeys God. The Hebrew call presumptuous sins, sins with a high hand. That is you're doing wrong and you boast about it. You're not struggling with it, you boast about it. Doing wrong and you got your, you hold your head up and you're as proud as a peacock in sin and you look and you look at the preacher and the saints and everyone else with an arrogant look on your face and say what I'm grown I do what I want to do let me remind you ain't nobody grown when it comes to God because there are things that will bring you to your knees with your grown self God knows how to make all that hair fall out. God knows how, praise the Lord, to take all that health away. God knows how to get rid of all that wealth. God knows how to put you in a wheelchair so fast you won't even know how you got there. The Lord knows how. Hey, don't, now, nah, don't, don't get beside yourself. Don't get too big for your britches because we serve a God who knows how to bring you down. Elihu said concerning the passions of Job, Elihu said these things happen often to the sons of men. Job was too righteous. He was self-righteous. Job accused God foolishly. Job said about God, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That's, not, that's nothing to shout over. Job was saying, God is, he's punishing me for nothing. But I'm going to take the high road and I'm going to trust him anyhow. That's, not, that's nothing to shout over. Amen. That's, that's, that's not good. Job said that he, he boasted that his righteousness is superior to God. And God said, you know what? You know what, Job? You, you, you're a good man. But I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to use the devil. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you around. One day when the sons of God came before the Lord, Satan came with them. God's got a plan. He said, where you been, Satan? Satan says, I've been walking to and fro in the earth seeking whom I may divide. God says, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, well, I have, but I can't touch him. You've given him everything. And you put a hedge around him. So just move that hedge and let me touch him. Oh, I'll make him curse you to your face. God said, all right, I'll move the hedge. Just don't kill him. Now, who, who God had in mind all the time was Job. Not Satan, Job, and us. That's why he let it get recorded in scripture to show us just how much he loves us. This is why you better know how to handle your health. This is why you ought to know how to handle your good looks. 
Come on, Mr. Handsome and Miss Beautiful. This is how, why you ought to be able to uh, know how to handle, praise the Lord, if God blessed you and gave you nice nails, real or otherwise. Nice car, nice whatever, real or otherwise. If God had blessed you, stay humble because he knows how to let Satan come by one day and ask him, have you considered my servant? Next thing you know, you own the hot seat. So you ought to humble yourself before God and say, Lord, I just I humble myself before you because I know that you're God and I'm not. And Lord, I need you today because God, you know me. The Bible says he knoweth our frame. He knows that we're but dust. God, you know, hallelujah, in my fallen state, I'll give in to presumptuous sin. So then, Lord, here I am. Look at this prayer. He prays to keep down me from presumptuous sins and let them have no dominion over me. And if you keep me, Lord, I heard him say, then I'll be upright and I'll be innocent of the great transgression. Somebody ought to say, keep me, Lord. Keep me from those things that I can't handle on my own. This is why you need Bible study. This is why we need the Holy Ghost. This is why we need prayer meeting. This is why we need to stay before the Lord. Because when you stay before God, God has a way of keeping you. Giving you strength to stand. Giving you strength to yield not under temptation. Because he yielded in his sin. Good God Almighty, this is when you get strength to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. How many today want God to keep them from presumptuous sins? I got a question for you. What do you want the most? Do you want to be kept? Or do you want another financial blessing? Do you want to be kept? Or do you want another raise? Do you want to be kept? Or do you want God to work on your haters? At the top of the list, don't ask God to keep you. Because if you let him keep you, that'll take care of everything else. For for those of us who serve the law and who are kept by the Lord, God has given us a promise that don't even require our prayers. God has given us a promise that we don't even have to ask him to perform it. He said no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you in judgment, I will condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. All you got to do is just serve the Lord. Tell somebody, just serve the Lord. Don't worry about this other stuff. Just serve the Lord. If you serve him, he has your back. If you serve him, he'll take care of it. So I hear David saying, Jesus, keep me from presumptuous sins and don't let them have dominion over me. Then I'll be upright, free and innocent from the great transgressions. And then he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Notice this. He goes from one level to the next. Not just what I say, but God let my heart be right. Not just what I say, but on the inside, make me right. On the inside, in my secret thoughts, can't nobody read my mind. Lord, let my mind, Lord, let my thoughts be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I need somebody today to tell the Lord, Lord, give me power to please you. Lord, I want 
want my thoughts. I want my actions. I want my words. I want my behavior to be pleasing in your sight. Yeah, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord. Somebody praise him if you will. Somebody praise him in the sanctuary. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. When you're pleasing God, you have to admit that there's a security that comes with pleasing God. When you're walking upright and you know that you are good God Almighty, no matter what happens, you tell yourself, if I don't wake up in the morning, everything will be all right. When you're pleasing God and trouble comes, you'll still know that he's got you in the hollow of his hand. When you're pleasing God and the devil attacks, you know, oh Lord, that it won't last long because weeping may endure for a night, but joy, ah, joy cometh in the morning. Can I get a witness? from some God pleasers. I talked about being troublemakers, but I, do I have anybody here who want to be a God pleaser to please the Lord? You might have to upset your neighbor to please the Lord. You might have to upset your mama to please God. You might have to upset daddy, upset your friends, but please him anyhow. To please God may make people talk about you, but please God anyhow. To please God may mean you have to walk alone, but please him anyhow. Because if you please him, he will please you. No good thing will I withhold from them that walk up rightly. The key to being blessed is living holy. The key to being blessed is serving God with your whole heart. Do I have anybody here who will go counterintuitive to what is told us today, who will operate in contrast to what we've been taught today instead of pulling on God for what we want God to do for us that will please us. How about today? Let's pull on God and ask God to help us to please him. He's pleased when an unborn baby is saved. He's pleased when folk walk out of an adulterous affair. He's pleased when a homosexual gets delivered. He's pleased when we help the poor. He's pleased when we come out of sin. He's pleased when we live holy. Ah, please, when we walk around. Yeah! Ah, yeah! The Lord, he's pleased when we live holy. Holy! Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. 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 I can't do it on my own. I can't live this on my own. In me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Can't do it on my own. But with the Lord's help. With the Lord's help. I can endure every situation. I can serve through every hardship. I can preach when I'm hungry. I can preach when I'm full. I can serve when things are going right. And I can serve when things are going wrong. That's what Paul describes. That's what he means when he says, now I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. It's not, he's not saying, if the Lord be my strength, I can build a supermarket. If the Lord be my, uh, be my strength, I can build a, 
uh, a, a tall building, uh, a, a skyscraper. If the Lord is my strength, I can work my way up to becoming a millionaire. Although all those things are true and you can't do them without God, that's not what he was saying there. What he was saying there was, I'm glad, Philippians, that you got together and sent me another offering to help me out. And I'm glad that your care for me has flourished again. Not that you didn't care, but you didn't have the opportunity to bless me. Said, but I'm so glad that you blessed me. I, I received from Aphrodite what you sent me. But I want you to know in the meantime, before it arrived, I, I've learned how to preach full. And I've learned how to preach when I'm hungry. I've learned how to preach when I have all, everything I need. I got Rocky playing for me. Got a good amen corner. Microphone is right. I've learned how to preach with all those things going for me. I've also learned how to preach when Rocky couldn't make it. Hallelujah. And the sound was all right. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthen the me. See, some of us can't praise him until everything is just right. Your praise is not real. Some of us can't lift him up until he does everything that we want him to do. He doesn't value your lifting because it's not right. But when you learn how to praise him, learn how to lift him up, and learn how to live for him, why are you waiting for me? That's what God honors. And that's what God desires. But none of us, not even Paul, could do it without the Lord's help. Hence, Lord, help me to please you. You keep me from presumptuous sins and cleanse me from my secret faults. You know, the Bible is good for psychology too because Dr. Ojinga Help me out here. See, that, that, that's something too when you're talking to someone and you ask them, they, well, why, do you, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Sometimes the answer they give you, they're, they're not hedging. Sometimes they'll actually tell you, well, well I, I really don't know. They, well, let's go back in your past. Typically, you know, dad left. And when all else fail, you know, blaming on old dad. Dad or the white man. When all else fails. But sometimes people actually hit the wall that I don't know. That's why David asks, who can understand his errors? Well, I'm just like this. That's a true answer. Sometimes we are. Because we're born in sin, shaping in iniquity. We come here fallen. We don't learn to fall. We learn to stand. Amen. Human beings don't have to be taught to tear down. My grandbabies are so precious. So precious. Come from the factory, grabbing your tie, pulling it. Grabbing your little flower, tearing it up. Yeah. Everything John, Patrick, John Jr. get his hands on, he, he feels that what he's supposed to do is destroy it. If it can be pulled down, he'll pull it down. If it can be pushed over, he'll do that. If it can be walked on, 
He'll walk on it. If it can be hit, he'll punch it. He has to be taught not to. Why is he like that? Because he is. All human beings are. So it takes God. It takes the Lord Jesus to help us with our sin. I'm getting ready to pray, but let me tell you what won't work. Let me tell you where you can't perch, where you can't rest. You can't rest on the branch that says, this is just how I am. See, you can't rest there. See, and that's what we do. Well, you, this is me. You just got to accept this is me. No, you can't rest there. God won't rest there. You got to let him help you go further up that tree to how he would have us to be. Well, this, 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 this propensity runs in my family. You can't rest there. God wants you to be different. God wants you to be the one to bring the family out. Amen. So, Lord, change me. Work on me. If you're here today and you want the Lord's help in pleasing him. You see things in your life that you will admit that you know that are not pleasing to him. And you want his assistance in uh, dealing with those things and removing those things. God, there are things in me that you are not pleased with, that I need your assistance. I need you to help me get rid of those things because Samson would not do something about his love for Delilah. His love for Delilah eventually became his undoing. Did you hear that? Because Samson would not do something about his love for Delilah. His love for Delilah ultimately became his undoing. You have to do something about what's in you that God's not pleased with. Or that thing will eventually become your undoing. And nothing and no one is worth that. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Lift your hands to him. Oh, God. Father, we come before you this morning in need. We come in need of your assistance. And we need your assistance in multiple areas and in diverse ways. In the er area of secret faults and errors, things about us that we don't even understand ourselves, propensities and shortcomings that we possess that we simply do not see, cleanse us from these things. Cleanse us. Cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us. Wash us, Lord. In your blood. In the name of Jesus. Remove those things. Those who are watching by television and listening by radio, join us in this prayer. 
Oh my God, those who are, you're up, it's, you're in the middle of the night and you can't even sleep. And oh, it is the will of God that you would tune in and be a part of this. Ask the Lord to cleanse you right now. Cleanse me, Lord, from secret faults. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus. Take away those things. And oh, Father, those presumptuous sins, hallelujah, that are in my life, things that I know that you're not pleased with, hallelujah, things that I know I've read in the word that they are wrong, I know that they are. Father, I need you to hold me back from those things. In the name of Jesus, you are a keeper. You are a keeper. Well, God, we're on the altar because we want to be kept. We're here today because we want to be kept. Lord, keep us. Keep me. Keep me from presumptuous sins. Let them have, look at the word he used, no dominion. When a presumptuous sin have dominion over you, 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 you participate in it crying. You participate in it knowing you don't even want to do it. Asking yourself, why am I doing this? You're in bondage to it. Well, the Lord's slave will only be in bondage to him. For no man can serve two masters. If we're God's slave, we won't be a slave to the presumptuous sin. If we're a slave to the presumptuous sin, then we won't be a slave to God. Now, whose slave are you going to be? Somebody ought to tell the Lord today, Lord, I'm your slave. God, you have dominion over me. Take dominion over me, Lord. Take dominion over my hands. Take dominion over my mind. Take dominion over my spirit. Take dominion over my heart. Take dominion over my actions. Dominion, dominion, Lord. Dominion, Lord. Dominion, dominion. Hallelujah, Jesus. Take dominion, Lord. Dominion over me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're able to do it. You're able to do it. You're able to do it. In the name of Jesus, rule over me, Jesus. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Holy Spirit, sweep over my soul. Yes! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I challenge you to tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes in every category. Tell him yes. In every way, tell him yes. Tell him yes. Yes, I'll give it up. Yes, I'll give it up. Yes, I'll walk out of it. Yes, I'll give it up. Yes, I'll give him up. Yes, I'll give her up. Yes, I'll give it up to serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve you. I'm your servant, Lord. I'm your servant. You're my master. Hallelujah. The slave honors his master. The slave obeys his master. Master. Master Jesus. Master Savior. Master Lord. Upper room right now. Praise your master. Praise your master. Praise your master. Those who are streaming. Praise your master. Those who are streaming, those who will see this on television, praise the master. He's the master of the sea. He's the captain of my ship. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Lord, help us to please you. Help us, Lord. Help us. Work in us, Jesus, to do those things 
that are pleasing in your sight. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about your prayer request. Just get that part right. Before you call, he'll answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before you realize you need it, he'll provide. Have you ever had something to happen in your life and God had already made the provisions in advance? And you say, look at God. He saw it when I didn't. And he made the way long before I asked. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, we close this with the way the psalmist closed his. Let the words of my mind and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Would you worship the Lord? Oh, as you go to your seats, just praise him.